this happen? You've paid Blackwater over $800 million. Didn't anyone, didn't you or your subordinates ever stop to ask whether or not the legal framework was in place to hold these contractors accountable for its actions? The military certainly is when there is error committed. How could this have happened? Uh, first of all, this is not just a problem um, for State Department contractors. We have a lot of contractors working in Iraq, and we want to make sure there's a proper legal framework. But I don't think that it is proper to say that they were above the law. I've just told you that one of the, that the case that was just uh, referenced has, in fact, been referred to the Justice Department. We continue to believe that the tightening of that framework uh, would make uh, a great deal of sense, and we want to work for that legislation. Condoleezza Rice came here and conceded that there was a hole in the law as it applied to Blackwater. Do you know if that hole has been repaired? We're not sure. Uh, when a Blackwater uh, uh, military person commits a crime, they're not accountable under Iraqi law. They're not accountable under military law. So the question is, are they accountable under U.S. law? And there's still an open question about that because they're not committing a crime in, in the U.S. itself. So the House of Representatives passed a bill right. to say that they would be held accountable under U.S. law. I don't think the Senate has passed that bill. And it, the Justice Department, the FBI particularly, is doing an investigation. The Justice Department said they may bring criminal charges. They haven't yet. And, and when they do and when they get convictions, we'll see what the courts have to say as to whether they're going to be held accountable under U.S. law. And yet Blackwater's still getting millions of dollars in government contracts. And just a couple of weeks ago, they hired a big lobbying firm here in Washington to go after more contracts. What, what does that say to you? Now they want to do more private intelligence gathering. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know. We've had enough problems with intelligence by the CIA, uh, but at least they're accountable to us. I'm not sure what it's going to mean for Blackwater being the uh, agency to get intelligence for uh, the U.S. government. Yeah, if you go back to your district and you go down to the local diner or the cafe and you have a cup of coffee and a guy is sitting there and he says to you, Congressman Waxman, I mean, what do you make of Blackwater? I mean, what's your answer? Well, I don't understand why we're contracting out military operations for this country. A soldier that's working for Blackwater is answerable to Blackwater, which is answerable to its shareholders. American soldiers are answerable to the Constitution and the American people. The State Department is contracting out huge construction projects in Iraq as well. One such contractor, called First Kuwaiti, has a reputation that is hair-raising. Is it true that the State Department in Iraq hired a Kuwaiti company that's under investigation for kickbacks and bribery as well as using slave labor? It's true. And they had information about it or, uh, and should have known about it, and yet they went ahead with the contract anyway. And that's the company that uh, did such a, uh, uh, a terrible job on building this, uh, this new embassy in, in uh, Baghdad. With no competitive bidding, the State Department gave First Kuwaiti $600 million to build the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad, the largest and most expensive embassy in the world. This American fortress is now behind schedule and over budget to the tune of an additional $144 million. But that seems almost mundane compared to the testimony of Rory Mayberry, an American medic hired by First Kuwaiti. I believe I am one of only a few Americans that have recently worked on the site of the new embassy in Baghdad. My impressions about how the construction was being managed left me incredibly disturbed. Mayberry described how he boarded a plane in Kuwait City along with 51 Filipino laborers who thought they were heading for hotel jobs in Dubai. Well, Mr. Chairman, when the airplane took off and the captain announced that we were headed to Baghdad, all you know what broke out on the airplane. The men started shouting. It wasn't until the security guy working for First Kuwaiti waved an MP5 in the air that the men settled down. They realized that they had no other choice but to go to Baghdad. Let me spell it out clearly. I believe these men were kidnapped by First Kuwaiti to work on the U.S. Embassy.
They had no ID, no passports, and were being smuggled past U.S. security forces. I had a trailer all to myself on the green zone, but they were packed 25 to 30 a trailer. And every day they went out to work on, a, on the construction of the embassy without proper safety equipment. I saw guys without shoes, without gloves, no safety harnesses, and on scaffolding 30 feet off of the ground. Their toes were wrapped around the rebar like a bunch of birds. Despite being paid half a billion dollars in U.S. funds, First Kuwaiti refused to send an official to testify. Uh, Mr. Krongard, we want to welcome you to our hearing today. Howard Cookie Krongard was the State Department's own Inspector General, the person Secretary of State Rice trusted to expose serious problems. Krongard was called before the committee after his own staff complained he was not rigorously pursuing a growing mountain of complaints, from shoddy construction to human trafficking to Blackwater. Your role as Inspector General is to investigate waste fraud abuse in the State Department, but your office has not completed any investigations into Blackwater activities. Cookie Krongard's failure to investigate Blackwater really tripped him up. And, uh, and that uh, we will in fact find um, uh, weapons or, or evidence of weapons programs that are, are conclusive. I don't think we'll discover anything myself. It appears that there were not weapons of mass destruction there. You said you knew where they were. I did not. We know where they are. They're in the area around uh, Tikrit and Baghdad and, and uh, east, west, south and north. Well, first of all, I, I have it wrong. There are a lot of people who lie and get away with it. Talking about lies and your, your well, allegation that there was bulletproof evidence of ties between Al-Qaeda and Iraq. Was that a lie? Intelligence gathered by this and other governments leaves no doubt that the Iraqi regime continues to possess and conceal some of the most lethal weapons ever devised. The, our people are going to find out the truth, and the truth will say that this intelligence is good intelligence, no doubt in my mind. I don't know anybody that I can think of who has contended that the Iraqis had nuclear weapons. And we believe he has, in fact, reconstituted nuclear weapons. Saddam Hussein is determined to get his hands on a nuclear bomb. We cannot wait for the final proof. He's got him. He's got him. The smoking gun. He's got him. That could come in the form of a mushroom cloud. Colin Powell didn't lie. My colleagues, every statement I make today is backed up by sources, solid sources. These are not assertions. What we're giving you are facts and conclusions based on solid intelligence. He has not developed any significant capability with respect to weapons of mass destruction. He is unable to project conventional power against his neighbors. The, our people are going to find out the truth. I have not suggested there's a connection between Iraq and the 9-11. You have said in the past that it was, quote, pretty well confirmed. No, I never said that. Okay. I, I never think said that, that is... No, it's absolutely not. What I said was, uh, it's been pretty well confirmed, that he did go to Prague and he did meet with uh, a senior official of the Iraqi intelligence service. Saddam Hussein aids and protects terrorists, including members of al-Qaeda. Secretly and without fingerprints, he could provide one of his hidden weapons to terrorists or help them develop their own. What did Iraq have to do with what? The attack on the World Trade Center. Nothing! He said there were three main reasons for going to war in Iraq. Weapons of mass destruction. Saddam Hussein has gone to elaborate lengths, spent enormous sums, taken great risks to build and keep weapons of mass destruction. The claim that Iraq was sponsoring terrorists would have attacked us on 9-11. Before September the 11th, many in the world believed that Saddam Hussein could be contained. And that Iraq had purchased nuclear materials from Niger. The regime is seeking a nuclear bomb. Now, all three of those turned out, turned out to be false. Uh, first, uh, just if I might correct a misperception, I, I don't think we ever said, at least I know I didn't say, that there was a direct connection between September the 11th and, 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 and Saddam Hussein. Who does the president think he's effing kidding? Um, of course, it was information that was mistaken. There are a lot of people who lie and get away with it. Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. <laughs> okay. 
Nope, no weapons over there. 